alternative. But the ruqya itself, just making dua to somebody that will not uh, in hell. Okay, let us take it this way. Uh, they came to Umar ibn Khattab, you know, you know uh, Umar had the uh, had appointed one of the companions, Rudwan uh, Ta'ala alayhim, to uh, look after the zakat money. And from the zakat money, there were animals that has been given as uh, part of the zakat. Because when people have animals, cows, they don't give money, okay? They would give cow or lamb or sheep, okay? Yeah? So they used to have a yard where all the animals are kept, the animals of zakah, okay? So there is one type of disease that afflicts the skin of the camels. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa sayyidin al-mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Number one, I would thank him so much. I know that he was exaggerating. I'm not into his age. In fact, I am younger. So, okay. What he said is by Sheikh, you can judge. Number two, it was the habit of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an whenever somebody would mention him on or praise him in his face that he used to say to Allah Azza wa Jal, Allahumma la tu'akhidna bima yaqulun wa'afir lana ma la ya'lamun wa'aj'alna khayran mimma yadhunnun. Oh Allah, forgive me and do not account me with what they say. If somebody praises you so much and say he is the sheikh, so Allah do not account me with that. I'm not into that level. I'm a normal ordinary person. Okay? And forgive me on those things that my brothers know, don't know in secret what I do. Okay? So my secret affairs that you know, oh Allah, okay, the way how you have prevented me from the people, you have concealed my secret life, do not expose it and forgive everything that is between me and you. Okay? And make me to be better than how or what they think of me. This is what Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to say. Okay? And... Tayyip. Inshallah bi'idhni Allah azza wa jal. Okay. The topic is so huge. Truly. That I don't want to address it and I don't want to say anything about it because we will never cover anything about it. But what I am certain and sure about is every single one of you at least has one question. And one question will bring another question and will make us, inshallah ta'ala, in a simple way cover the whole topic. So the best way is instead of me telling you what I want to say, I'd rather be here answering all of your questions. And one question will lead to another and spend the time, inshallah ta'ala, in the most beneficial way and you've got at least one thing that you want to know about it. What do you think? Okay? So we can utilize the whole time. I don't know if they have uh, speakers there. The sisters. Sisters come here. Can I say they come here? Nothing, huh? This one. This one. Okay, inshallah ta'ala. So, anyway, in a little while, I'll, I'll, I'll be shouting. So, okay, what do you think? Should make it this way? Yeah? yeah. Beautiful. Okay, where shall we start from? How do you know if somebody is affected? By evil eye or okay. How do you know if somebody is afflicted with black magic or evil eye or jinn? I think Abu Muhammad must have touched this issue. No? What can I do? Okay, I would speak of my own experience, okay? 
I've been in this field almost about 17 years now. Okay. And long before that, okay, with the scholars who are engaged with such things, helping, giving hand, learning, okay. Uh, 70 to 80 percent of the people who visit uh, the Ruqat, okay, in most cases they don't have no black magic, no jinn, no evil eye. But it's very important for us to understand something which is very important. Somebody would come to you loaded with problems, okay, and they are looking for a solution. Okay, and they are looking for a cure, okay, of this problem that they have. If they go to a doctor, immediately he's going to diagnose them with depression and stress. You don't have to be qualified to, get, you know, to say to somebody you're stressed. In fact, most of us, we are stressed and we are depressed because of the environment where you are living, okay, you are always a stranger. Even if you are living next to a Muslim or you are living in a Muslim neighborhood. What do you know about your uh, neighbor? Nothing. The first thing that comes in your mind is mind your business. Why would he know? Why would he have to know, okay, everything that goes in my life? Why does he have to put his nose, okay, in my own affairs? This is not the attitude of the Muslim. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A Muslim to a Muslim, al Muslim lil Muslim kal bunyan yushuddu ba'duhu ba'dhan. Let alone now your neighbor, your own brother. You feel so ashamed or you feel so annoyed that he knows a little bit about your own personal things. Okay, if you are married, you are separate, you are living independent, and so on and so forth. Okay, you get it? You think the same way how the people are molded in this society. Okay, mind your business, mind the gap. Okay, you concentrate, okay, and just look about you know, you know, your own affair. And this is not the, the, the life of the Muslims at all. There was a problem in the, in the, in the house of Rasulullah inside the house that the, the whole community knew, okay, of Medina. All of them knew that the wives of Rasulullah upset him and he was really upset with them and they quarreled, okay, Rasulullah with his wives and he was that close actually to divorce his wives. That's his own internal affair to the extent that the companions were, were stressed and upset and Okay, they start crying inside the masjid of Rasulullah Umar was notified. Okay, Umar came running and he said, Wallahi by Allah, I will never rest until I bring the smile to the face of Rasulullah Now we are living with neighbors, they don't even really know who you are. I don't even, even you, don't, you don't even really know, really, truly, what's the name of your immediate neighbor. If you do, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about like me, maybe. Okay, you'll be living in flats for 10 years. You don't even really know, wallahi, the flat in front of you. Okay, have they eaten? Okay, what's the, the standard of their life? Are they earning? No. Oh, come on, brother. This is not, nothing to do with, you know, subhan it's nothing, in, in none of our business. It's nothing to do with, you know, subhanAllah, you know, considering neighborhood and so on and so forth. Wouldn't you be stressed, depressed? You don't need somebody qualified to tell you that. You have all these illnesses and then, in, you know, the last solution when they don't find any diagnosis of your own problems is stressed. You go to a doctor and immediately the first thing that you would think of is you are stressed. When you are stressed, your digestion system will not be working properly. You will be bobbing. <laughs> okay. And... You can't breathe, your blood circulating system, you're a human being. 
it does really affect you. Okay? Now, doctor will not solve your solution. Yes, your, uh, your problems, neither he will provide your solution. Who will provide? Huh? Who? 